here in Philadelphia, the Unemployment Help Center over on Spring Garden Street. And a lot of people tell me they have been looking for work in their field for more than a year now, and that savings has simply run out. And they wish now that they had spent time and energy not only making money, but paying attention to saving what they earned. Ronnie Galileo works on the computer. He's looking for a job in engineering at Philadelphia's unemployment office, and he has plenty of company today. Like many here, he thought the good times would last forever, and he didn't prepare his bank account for the worst. What would you do different? What would I do different? I will make sure that I save money. And we heard that over and over and over again from Philadelphia's jobless. If they only knew then what they know now. I would save more. You know, look forward to it ready for a rainy day because right now it's really raining. We're all trying to find a job and uh, better ourselves in this uh, tough economic situation. So hindsight is 2020. So I wish I had uh, you know taken the opportunity to you know put more money aside to uh, maybe boost my situation and uh, help keep me afloat a little longer than you know what I had expected. Many told me they've been out of work for a year or more. And now they've depleted any savings. Some even struggle to juggle a couple of part-time jobs. 23-year-old Shakira Fox watches and learns. She's in school to be a paralegal, and she vows to avoid financial pitfalls of her elders. Coming into her own in a recession has shaped her view of money. Do you have credit card debt? Do you have friends with credit card debt? No, no. Well, those people that they really depend on the materialistic things so yeah they will grab the credit card at Macy's or whatever um, but you have to understand that it's going to all come back to you, to you in the future and it's going to mess up your credit well you won't be able to grab that house or that car or you won't be able to be stable for your career so you're not going to make that mistake no I'm not all right good somebody's listening personal development expert Teresa Moore Griffin joins us tonight Okay, Teresa, you heard everybody we talked to said the same thing. They wish they had saved more money. Absolutely understandable. And I think that, you know, that's true for so many in our country today and really around the world. Um, people are wishing that they had taken better care of their resources. And in order to do that, we have to have a particular mind about our money. And it's a different mind than what we've had in the past. Yeah, for starters, you say we need to learn to live below our means, right? Absolutely. Live below our means, hold on to our resources. And I say that not from a mindset of holding on because we're terrified and fearful that the bottom is going to fall out. I think that does help the bottom to fall out when everyone's afraid but more holding on to our resources because peace of mind is not worth that piece of jewelry or that new car or that new thing that sooner or later loses its luster. Yeah, and we also have to change, I know you've written about this, how we actually think about money, how we feel about it. You know, even if we have some now, you really have to start inside, am I right? Absolutely. And my writing and my book is all about, it's called Lies That Limit. And it's all about the idea that we believe so many things that are not true and we allow those things to guide our lives when there are much better, healthier ways for us to live than to, for example, be controlled by an insatiable urge to buy and consume, which we've all been driven to do in our country in recent years. Now, I understand all that, but what do you say to the unemployed who are like, you know, all these tips are good in theory, but I need money now. What do you say to people who have no money now to save? You know, it's interesting to me. I talked with a woman last week who told me that one of the best things for her children has been the fact that she does not earn the kind of money she once earned. She said, because when I earned a lot of money, I took care of my children. I was the ATM machine. Yeah. She said, but now <laughs> yeah, they have to provide to for that. themselves. They have to make their own way. Well, it's, it's a tough economy out there and tough, especially for those who are looking for work. And some of the lies you tell us, and maybe they can tell themselves, is you're not a failure if you don't have a job. It's not everything. Those are the sorts of issues that you have to kind of get beyond to move forward. Am I right? Absolutely. We spend a lot of times, whenever things happen that we don't anticipate or don't like, feeling badly about what's happening to us. And we can feel bad for a moment. And then we have to pick ourselves up and let that slip up become a step up, that we find another way to make our way in the world and to find that job that we're looking for. And sometimes it means we have to be more flexible about what we're looking for, where we're looking, the salary range, the industry, all of those things are considerations. All right, Teresa, thank you so much for joining us tonight. My great pleasure. Thank you.
A lot of great tips there. Lauren is joining us now.